right. It's way later than I said I was going to be going live, but here I am. I'm gonna pause for just a minute and see if some people join. Okay, I have someone here, yay. So I'm basically kind of just going to start and hopefully more people will join in. All right, okay, cool, we have a few people. Hello, everybody. So for those of you who don't know me, I am Madeline of Woolly Witch of the West. So I'm a fiber artist, obviously. You're probably are too if you're here to look at the spinning wheels. I have dogs with me here, so I can't guarantee that there won't be dog noises. Maybe you can see his ear, that's Rooney. Um, and my phone is plugged in, so there's a chance that the plug will get wagged. So hopefully I won't make any of you seasick with the dog coming and going. But he's also very curious about what is in this box right in front of me that you can't see. But I'm also, I'm in the wool corner, so we're dealing with some challenges of tiny house living on where to do this unboxing. So I have a new spinning wheel and this is whoop, sorry. gonna try not to be awkward here. I'm also on an exercise ball so if I bounce that's why. Um, so I needed a travel wheel that was not an electric wheel although I have electric eel wheels and those are also fantastic. So the wheel that I got was a Spinolution Polywog. So these are really tiny wheels that are made in the US. They're about seven and eight or eight pounds and it should be really easy for me to take on the train. What number wheel is this one asks Alana. That's not fair. Are we counting the electric wheels or not? <laughs> um, I have uh, two other main wheels that I use. I have a shaft match list, which is like my my soulmate wheel that I will never get rid of. And I also have a shaft ladybug, which is what I've been using as my travel wheel. <laughs> All of them, says Alana. I don't get off the hook here. Um, but the ladybug doesn't fold down or anything. And I'm looking at, I'm traveling by train to an event in Washington next month. So I'm gonna be at the Red Elder Fiber Arts Retreat taking some classes that I'm really excited about. It's a masked and proof of vaccination required event. So I'm really excited to go. Um, and I'm meeting up with Kate Larson there and assisting with some of her classes as well, which I'm excited about. Um, so polywog wheel, eight pounds, will fit in a carry-on bag and I can take it on a train because um, I didn't really want to take classes from Judith McKenzie. Oh my gosh, I'm taking a class from Judith McKenzie. Um, but I didn't really want to take classes from Judith McKenzie on an electric wheel. I wanted a travel wheel that had ratios that I felt um, comfortable with. So I have this polywog wheel with all the little bells and whistles. These are what the bobbins look like. It comes with three four ounce bobbins. And I am taking it out of the box and I finally feel well enough to put it together. So I'm gonna do that. I've actually had this wheel for several days and I haven't put it together, which is kind of, yeah, that tells you how not super great I've been feeling. So one thing that's neat about it is that the this is the front of the flyer. It has a hook orifice instead of a tube orifice, but it's magnetic. So it just clicks on and off. That's pretty cool. What else is in here? That's the drive band. More bobbins. I'm probably not going to untape everything so I don't make you guys crazy with the squeaky sounds of everything. Okay, so this is the fly. It smells like new wood. And oh, cool. Yeah, it has a built in lazy cape. These are the pegs for the lazy cape. I'll put that together in a minute. Okay. And Ooh, this is the entire rest of the wheel. How cute is that? It is super tiny and you treadle with your toes. Oops. So once it gets going, maybe I'm holding it unevenly on my lap. What's going on here? There we go. It's 
So you just put your toes on there and treadle. It's so cute. And it looks like putting it together is gonna be really pretty easy. So maybe should have thought a little bit more ahead about space here. In the wool corner for filming because you're not gonna maybe not gonna be able to see it so well. So that's the front side. And it's so tiny that I think most of what you're gonna be able to see is the comments. I'm not quite sure what this big long piece here is for. I watched a video on putting it together before, oh, maybe that's the tension block. Um, so one thing about this wheel is that it doesn't have a traditional scotch tension or double drive. I don't know what to call the kind of tension it uses, but there's a, a tension block that goes in here that's like a break. Hello! <laughs> yeah, so that it's like a break. So it, the block slides in here and presses against this, I don't know if you can see it in there, but the shaft of your flyer. So there's a block that screws in here and presses against that, and I think it has felt on the end of it. Yeah, so that acts as the brake band for this wheel. So I can put that on where you all can see it before I attach it to the rest of the wheel. That's gotta be what this is. Sorry for the crinkling. I don't know which way is up, I think like that. And then this goes on here. A little spring for the tension, and then this screws on this way. If you have the coordination to do it. So then as you tighten it, it'll go up against that block and that will be how you adjust your tension. I think I put the block in upside down. Which was clever of me. Though I don't know if I put it in the other way if that's gonna fit. We're gonna find out. You're all in this with me, so hopefully I don't. Oh yeah, it definitely goes that way, so. And I think, there we go. So it goes that way, and then as you tighten this, it will press that up against this shaft and that's what will adjust the take up on the wheel, which is kind of unique. Huh. It's not adjusting it too much. I might have to give it a try, but maybe this spring goes on the other side of it. Well, other than that, I think this piece just screws in. The base right here. And that's the whole wheel. Isn't that cute? So it's got these guys go up here for a little kind of onboard lazy cape situation. So that's where your extra bobbins go. We've got it set up, that's cute.
And then the bobbins definitely have a right side and a long side. Thank you. Yeah, I'm really excited about the new wheel. There we go. And then the front of the fly is magnetic and it just kind of snaps on and stays, allegedly, if you get it on right side up like that, then it snaps on and stays. That's the whole thing. And the drive band, I suppose. The last thing I need on is a drive band. Put that on, you just kick the little treadles out of the way down here, like that. And then loop it round, which I'm gonna set it down to do where you guys can't see, so sorry about that. But yeah, that's it, new travel wheel. I should be able to take it apart and bring it with me on the train, and I am super excited about that. First time stretching a new drive band is always a bit fiddly. So, sorry, awkward. Maybe I should have put this together like on a table or something in front of me, but I didn't think that far ahead. All right, there we go. I used Firefly recently. Love it. I'm from Ocean Combo. Oh, that's really exciting. Yay. Yeah. I don't know anything about the other wheels, but I do have a friend, Katie, who has one of these. So I saw it in person and she let me treadle on it a little bit. So I knew I liked it. And what really tipped me over the edge was that one of my guildmates had a hat box wheel for sale, which is a Louette wheel. They are so cool. But, um, and I almost got that one instead, just mostly... I admit that a lot of it is an aesthetic thing, like the case just looks like a hat box. It's very cool. Just this little tiny wheel, but it's a direct wheel. So you, it has a side facing main wheel on the wheel and then the bobbin faces directly against that and has a band around the outside of it. So when you turn this wheel, it turns your fly, which is very cool. And I've never seen a direct wheel before. But that also means it only works with one size pulley or whirl. So the speed of the fly is the speed that you have. Kind of like an older Ashford wheel. So that's kind of what made me decide to get a different wheel instead because this one costs the same amount of money as that one and it has, um, you know, three speeds that I can use instead of just one which will make it a much better wheel for me to take classes on since I can adjust it depending on what I'm spinning. But yeah, so now I have the drive band on and there it is. Also, I have fibromyalgia, so being able to carry things that aren't super heavy is a really important thing for me. And this wheel is not too heavy. Let's see if I can get it going. Oh, I definitely adjusted the tension because that's harder than it was before. But, yeah. There you go. So, that is it. Cute new wheel. So, now I just have to get to know it. I have some Montana wool I'm going to spin up and see if I can get it done in time for the mitten knit along that I'm doing with the Montana Fiber Shed next week. Um, and I'll decide if I feel like it's sturdy enough to be the shell for a pair of lined mittens that I'm gonna do with that. Thank you, Anna. Yeah, I am really excited. I'm definitely gonna, this is probably gonna be the wheel that I bring back and forth to Guild too, since it's so much lighter than the other one. I cannot believe it. It's like eight pounds. So yeah, that'll be good. And I know it also has like an accelerator piece you can get as an add-on, so Hush. Sorry, my puppy has something to say. Um, what was I saying? Oh, there's an accelerator piece you can get for it so you can have um, more ratios, more speeds to spin with. 
and you can also get um, something that will raise the orifice up a little bit. I'm pretty short. Hush. <laughs> um, so I'm only five feet tall, so spinning on the tiny wheel probably isn't going to be much of a problem with me for me. And it also has a jumbo fi. Basically, you can get a 12 ounce bobbin for these instead of a four ounce bobbin, or is it an eight ounce bobbin? Probably eight. Um, and um, this isn't like a sponsored post or anything. I'm not. This isn't a. I didn't get this wheel given to me or asked for a review or anything. I just decided that this was the travel wheel that I wanted, so I thought I would share with you guys. I also really like, um, like I know a lot of other wheels are really fantastic, like Modicraft wheels are amazing, but I also really like that it's made in the U.S. So, so far I only have U.S. made wheels from Schacht and Spin Illusion. The Firefly goes to 64 ounces. That's insane, that's huge! How big is a 64 ounce bobbin? That's intense. Is that like the same size that's on like an Ashford Country Spinner? Do you know? That seems like, I have the Jumbo Fly for my um, Ladybug, but that's only eight ounces, like twice one of these. So that must be like an art yarn maker's dream to have a 64 ounce bobbin. Massive, you th I think massive should be the official term for a 64 ounce bobbin for sure. That's fantastic. Yeah, um, so with the hooks on the fly on this, I'm not gonna be able to do any art yarn spinning or anything like that. I won't be able to make any of my lock spun yarns on here. Um, so that will uh, just not be something that I can do on this wheel. So if I wanna do any core spinning or lock spinning, I'll probably do that on my matchless or my ladybug. Now I have to decide if I'm gonna keep the ladybug or not. That's gonna be a big choice. I have been thinking about, um, I've been thinking about teaching more. So if I keep the ladybug, I could use it as a student wheel and that might be good. I could just bring it into the gallery and leave it there when I'm not using it. But we do live in a very small space, so there isn't really a lot of room for extra spinning wheels lying around. Um, but I can just take this one apart. Spinolution is meant for art yarns. Cool, yeah, maybe. Right now I do more art yarns on the shaft wheels that I have because I have the jumbo fly for them. So I have a big enough orifice. Um, and then I have the jumbo fly for the shaft wheels has like a slider on it. I'm trying to think where I put it. Oh, I do have it right here. Hi, I can show you. Oh, sorry, the puppy is right at my feet right where I'm gonna set this down. Sorry, good boy. Um, so the Shacked Jumbo Fly, this is the Jumbo Fly for, for the Shacked, so I like this about it. It has the sliders on it. They're a little stiff. It's also cold, it's colder in this corner. Um, so they slide a little better, but I really like this. It doesn't have hooks, so that makes it way less of a pain to try and do art yarns on it, but I don't you do a lot of art yarns. I mostly just do um, box spinning, but not a lot of like the super chunky things that some people do for weavings and things. So yeah, that's, that's probably pretty much all I have, unless anybody else has any questions or anything. Since I'm live, I could talk about the knit along I'm doing with the Montana Fiber Shed, if anybody wants to know about that. I can pick up the wheel and show it to you all again if you like. But otherwise I could also sign off and get some wool and play with my new wheel. If I had been brilliant, I would have brought some with me. But it's in the other room. <laughs> yeah. All right. 
Thank you. Well, thank all of you for joining me while I put together this little wheel. I'm going to go fiddle with it and make sure I have everything done correctly. I think I might have the um, tension block for the, the brake block. I don't even know what to call that. Not a brake band, but the block. I don't think I have that on correctly. I think I might have it backwards. So I'm going to look that up and I'm going to go grab some wool and I'm going to do some spinning on this Sunday. So, yeah. Much love to you all. I hope that you are warm and doing something that you love where you are. Surely that's what Sundays are for, right? All right, I will catch you all later once I figure out how to stop this thing. Oh no, more people are joining now. I was just going to sign off. You would love to see my test yarn later. Oh, absolutely. I will definitely share the test yarn. I am, I am spinning a mystery bat. That's one thing that Lavon from the wool barn, or not the wool barn, the... Oh my gosh, I am having a moment here. Um, she runs one of the mills here in Montana. I think it might just be called, she might just be the wool mill here on Instagram. But one of the things that she does is she makes Montana mystery bats, which is basically uh, leftover fiber from various um, milling and carting that she does. If she has leftovers that aren't in large amounts, she just kind of throws them all together and cards them all up and what you get is what you get. So I don't even know what's in it. So it'll be really a fun blended spin and I won't be too attached to having a perfect yarn from it, for it from it or anything like that. I think it's going to be a very fun spin. So I will definitely make sure that I share that with everyone later. But hello and all my love to the people who just joined. You missed me. But this I will save this and put it on my grid so there will be a replay. And I think I'm maybe going to try to go live on Sundays a little bit more often just for a little while and maybe do some spinning. And that's um, I think one of my future plans. But yeah, if any of you have Montana yarn and would like to join a knit along, you should send me a message for some details because we would love to have you. It's over Zoom, I'm hosting, and that would be fun. So I'm going to. Everybody else enjoy your Sunday too. Thanks for being here. Bye. Mwah.